Ah, summertime. My favorite time of the year. How's your summer going, everyone? It's me, Diana, the Doll Fairy. And if you're feeling the summer vibes too, you're in for a huge treat. Myself and a bunch of other doll artists, including Doll Motion, Characters Factory, Doll's Brand New Look, Dollumentary, Kolsomolsky Dolls, Cairo's Workshop, My Mini Mod, Scariosities, and Vani have combined forces to create an entire lineup of summer-themed dolls to share with you today. I guess that's enough relaxing in the pool for now. Time to transform and start up some doll magic for today's custom. So, what doll should we make for summer? Hmm, well, my birthday is in August. It's actually in two days, which means I'm a Leo. Ah, I've got it, the perfect character. Solgaleo, the legendary Alolan mascot of Pokemon Sun. Solgaleo is not only a lion, but it's also sun-themed and comes from a tropical region. Oh, and you know what else, guys? This gives me a great idea. Lots of people have mentioned that they'd love to see someone do a series of Zodiac-inspired dolls. That didn't sound that interesting to me until I connected the idea to Pokemon, and then the inspiration exploded. So I'm happy to announce that Solgaleo will be the first in a new series I'm embarking on and committing to completing each month, as intimidating as that may be, the Pokemon Zodiac. I already have lots of ideas for this series and I'm super excited to share it with you. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of my Pokemon Zodiac videos, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. So let's jump right in with Leo. I feel that it's really fitting to start with my own star sign. So. Leos are dramatic, creative, self-confident, and have an air of royalty about them. Yeah, I kind of like that description. <laughs> With that in mind, I'm going to enlist the help of Ever After High's Briar Beauty, who has lovely tan skin that will look great with the white armor I have in mind for Solgaleo. Hi Briar, will you help us out? Yay, let's get started on your transformation. My vision for Solgaleo is a futuristic warrior look crossed with a sort of sun goddess space valkyrie. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not even sure how to describe it exactly, but I wanted to stay really true to the feeling of awe that you'd get if you saw the Pokemon Solgaleo standing right in front of you. My version of Solgaleo is a warrior goddess, very intense. I followed this concept sketch pretty closely, although the design of the armor pieces did change a bit throughout the process. I knew that creating the armor would be the biggest challenge and one of the most important assets of this doll's design. The first thing I did, after re-watching Delightful's doll armor tutorial a few times to get hyped and take notes, was to create the shapes of the individual armor pieces. I used colored paper to help me keep track of the different pieces. I also sort of tested out the look by using existing bits of doll clothing and accessories, just to play around with what shapes and pieces I liked the look of. I decided on using these boots from Rosabella Beauty, but I cut off the top pieces with an X-Acto knife in order to cut down on the bulk around her calves. Once I had determined the size and shape of each piece, I traced around the pieces on fun foam that I will paint later. I cut them out carefully with an X-Acto knife, protecting my table underneath with this colorful plastic placemat. I thought it was actually a lot of fun slicing through the foam. I don't know why. For the spiky parts, I know that using fun foam will make them too thick and not as elegant as I want them to look, so I'm using index cards for these delicate pieces. I carefully tape them together at an angle in order to create the look that I want. I'll paint over them later so you won't be able to tell that they're just paper. Underneath the armor, she's going to have a black leotard. So I used this Ever After High Apple White Mirror Beach bathing suit to create a pattern and make the leotard. Since the fabric I'm using is a little stretchy, I was able to sew it right onto the doll, then turn it inside out and put it back on the doll. It's not the best piece of clothing I've ever made, but it'll do because it'll be mostly covered up. <laughs> the way I worked on this doll was kind of all over the place, but let's get back to the armor pieces for now. Following Delightful's tutorial, I used the heat from a candle flame to shape the foam to better fit the doll as shin guards, arm guards, gauntlets, shoulder pads, knee pads, and the curved sun pieces. Then I painted all of the pieces in black acrylic paint, watered down a bit for more even coverage in several layers. This is the stage at which I realized this would have been a lot easier if I had cut them out of black foam to begin with. 
I want them to have a black base so that I can dry brush on the metallic colors to make it more, look more like metal. This took hours and hours of my life that I will never get back. But the pieces do end up looking pretty cool. I actually ended up just painting the white pieces a solid shimmery pearlized white though. During this process, to prevent the paper spike pieces from curling up from the moisture of the paint, I reinforced the points with pieces of wire. This made the pieces much stronger and allowed them to keep their shape. I also paint the shoes black and add some gold accents reminiscent of Solgaleo's gold claws. After glazing the finished armor pieces with some diluted Liquitex matte varnish to protect them, we'll set the armor pieces aside for now and shift our focus to the face. I normally do the reroute before the face up, but I was still waiting for the hair to arrive in the mail and the weather was finicky, so I had to jump in and use Mr. Super Clear whenever the humidity level was down. After removing her original face paint with acetone nail polish remover, cutting her hair and scraping the glue out of her head, and then giving the face two initial coats of Mr. Super Clear, she's ready for her new face. I start by simply outlining the eyes with a light color. This face up is very different from any I've done before, which was both exciting and intimidating. Solgaleo's head looks like it contains a galaxy of stars, and its eyes glow white within the galaxy. I wanted to recreate this look by using layers of pastels across the top of her head down to the bridge of her nose, where the color will start to gradually fade out. I want the galaxy to be mostly blue, but to have a greenish and purplish glow in some places. I lost track of how many layers of MSC I used throughout this process. I wanted the color to be vibrant and more opaque, so I used darker blues, but now that I look back on it, I think I should have started using lighter blues and then gradually darkened areas throughout the process. Each layer of sealant made my colors duller and darker, and it got a little frustrating, like nothing was changing between layers. Eventually, I started turning my attention to the eyes by outlining the lashes and eyebrows in light blue. This time, the irises will be a glowing white, while the whites of her eyes will actually be a darker blue. It felt really weird to do that, but gradually it started to come together, and it looked pretty cool. I used white acrylic paint for the white pupils to make them bright and allow them to really stand out against the darker colors. From there, it was just adding more detail like the eyelashes and building up more color in the galaxy. I used white to highlight the lashes and make them stand out against the dark backdrop as well. I fill in the pupils with the same blue color I'm using for her sclera, or the white part of her eyes. I don't know, I learned that from Hextune. <laughs> for some reason, it looks darker on camera than it did in real life. She really looks kind of scary in my opinion, but I think that's what Solgaleo should look like. One thing I wished I could have achieved on my Veltal doll was an intense expression, but her eyebrows made her look too serene. Solgaleo looks much more intense. And then some final attempts to highlight the greens and purples in the galaxy. They're so hard to see on camera, which is so frustrating because you could see them so well in real life. I kept trying to use lighter and lighter colors to stand out against that very dark blue. Like I said, I probably should have approached this a bit differently, but you live and you learn, right? Then finally time to paint on the stars. This part was so much fun. Again, it seems you can barely see the color variation, but I tried to create a cluster of stars in the area where I focused the greenish highlights. I also added a couple of constellations and one sparkly star right in front.
and I'm finally done with the face. Now I have to make a wig. I'm using this bright orange nylon, which I feared might look kind of crazy, contrasting with the blue on her face, but I think the complementary colors end up working out really nicely. I glued my hair into wefts using Mod Podge on a sheet of plastic packaging. Not fun. And struggled to peel them off the plastic without destroying them. Very not fun. And created a wig cap on another doll using a piece of stretchy fabric, an elastic band, and two thick layers of Mod Podge. Then I drew some guidelines on the wig cap and glued on the wefts. That part was a little bit fun. But overall, I much prefer rerouting. Rerouting takes forever, but it's simple and less messy, and kind of relaxing. Of course, I referenced Mozakito's videos for creating the wig, and that proved to be very helpful. All right, now we're getting close to putting it all together. I'm making arm and leg bands to go underneath her armor. I'm simply hemming these rectangles, sewing them around the leg or the arm, then trimming, turning, and putting them on the doll. Voila! Now to assemble the armor. I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted it to connect though, so I spent way too much time playing with it and trying to figure out what would look best. I eventually decided to paint gold designs on each of the sun spikes, and I added orange Swarovski crystals to the middle of each. Then I attached the spikes, or petals, because they were kind of like flower petals, whatever you want to call them, to the gold outer pieces. I glued the spike petals to the gold crown and skirt base pieces by sandwiching the gold parts between both layers. As an added detail, I painted her nails gold to match Solgaleo's claws. Okay, now I think we're finally ready to really put her together. I'm using some thin leather ribbon to make straps for her armor pieces, and I'm also using fast grab tacky glue to attach some of the pieces right to the black bands. I couldn't figure out any other way to get it to look exactly the way I wanted. I had to do the same with the crown, I'm sad to say. I simply glued it to the wig. I feel like I cheated a little bit, but it looks the way I want it to look, and that's all that really matters to me. And guys, I gotta be honest, I fudged the tail too, and I wasn't 100% sure about including it, so I just tucked it into her skirt as an afterthought, and then I ended up really liking it, but it's just going to stay unattached like that for now because, you know, I just can't deal with it right now. <laughs>
Overall, I put a ton of work into this doll, and it was a bit experimental in some ways, but I'm very happy with the result. Her wild color scheme, starry galaxy face-up, and gleaming gold and white armor are just so eye-catching and unique. Her style is so different from any other custom I've made. One drawback about her is that she's very delicate, and I feel like if I dropped her on the floor, it would be a disaster. <laughs> so she's not super sturdy, but I just think she looks really nice, so I'm kind of just going to accept that. What a transformation! By the way, did you know that several of my Instagram followers guessed based on this picture that I was making Solgaleo? I'm pretty impressed, I have to say, because I showed such a small amount of what I was working on. Good for you guys! If you're not following me on Instagram at dollfairy, go follow me to see more sneak peeks and fun stuff. And the fun's not over yet! If you haven't already seen them, there are still a bunch of amazing summer-inspired doll repaint videos to check out on my friends' channels. The links to all their channels can be found in the description below, so go check them out! As for the next doll in the Pokemon Zodiac series, the star sign is Virgo. Any guesses as to what Pokemon I'll be making to represent Virgo? Let me know in the comments below who you think would suit that sign. Thank you so much for watching, friends! If you enjoyed watching, feel free to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more doll magic. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye!